In the last session, we have studied examples of applications of biotechnology in agriculture with emphasis on use of genetic engineering for the same. Now let us focus on applications of biotechnology in healthcare industry and environmental management. The healthcare industry is involved in manufacturing product and services that are useful in diagnosis, prevention and treatment of various diseases and disorders affecting humans and animals. Biotechnology for Disease Detection Variety of testing techniques such as ELISA that is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay, western blotting and DNA analysis have been devised to diagnose disease easily at early stages. Thus, earlier the causative agent of the disease is detected accurately, specific treatment can be started immediately to treat and cure it. These diagnostic techniques are being used for early and easy diagnosis of viral diseases such as hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV infection, rotavirus infection, bacterial diseases such as tuberculosis, syphilis. Parasitic infections like malaria, dengue, toxoplasmosis, detection of certain types of carcinomas or cancers, detection of genetic disorders, for example, thalassemia, phenylketonuria, ADA deficiency, cystic fibrosis, etc. Biotechnology for production of medicines and therapeutics. Many medicinal chemicals or drugs are required for treating and curing diseases. These included antibiotics like erythromycin, penicillin, gentamicin and antiviral agents such as acyclovir, gancyclovir, interferons to name a few. Pharmaceutical industries use biotechnology based processes to manufacture such chemicals. Other types of medicines produced are therapeutics like vitamins, for example, vitamins B12, B2, C and hormones like somatotropin, insulin, erythropoietin which are used to treat respective deficiency disorders. Many of these are also produced using biotechnology. Let us consider one such example in details. Insulin is an important hormone secreted by pancreas to control blood sugar level in humans. However, sometimes the pancreas do not produce this hormone and this results in a disorder termed as diabetes type 1. To treat diabetes disorder, the patients are usually given insulin in form of injections to the patients. The hormone was initially extracted from human cadavers or insulin of animal origin was used after proper processing. However, using product from such sources had lot of risks and disadvantages involved. With recombinant DNA technology or genetic engineering, it has become possible to manufacture human insulin with help of bacterial cells. The genes required for production of insulin from human cells have been engineered and inserted in a common bacterium Escherichia coli. Such genetically modified E. coli cells are then grown on a large scale under controlled conditions in containers termed as bioreactors. The insulin produced by the genetically modified bacteria is identical to human insulin. It is extracted and purified to be supplied as medicine to diabetes. Biotechnology for preventive care When disease causing agents or pathogens such as bacteria, viruses, protists or toxins enter our body, the cells of our immune system attack and destroy them, defending our body and preventing occurrence of diseases. The cells of the immune system recognize the pathogens due to presence of antigens of their outer surface. After recognizing the antigens, the immune system cells produce antibodies that destroy the pathogen. Thus, more quickly the pathogenic antigens are detected and recognized, the quicker and better immune system prevents occurrence of the disease by that pathogen. 
this understanding led to the development of practice of vaccination. Vaccination involves administration of vaccines to individuals so that immunity develops in them and they do not develop disease even after they encounter particular pathogen. Vaccine is a preparation containing antigen of a particular pathogen which is deliberately introduced into an individual to confer immunity towards the same pathogen. Earliest preparations of vaccines involved using actual pathogens either by killing them or inactivating them. These processes had intrinsic risk as it involved using actual pathogens in the production process. With help of genetic engineering, a safer alternative to the process is possible. The gene responsible for antigen production in the pathogen is isolated and inserted into non-pathogenic microorganism. Such genetically modified microorganisms can be grown safely on large scale. The antigen produced by them can then be extracted, purified and formulated into a vaccine. Similarly, the genes responsible for antigens from pathogens can also be engineered into plants that produce fruits and vegetables which are consumed raw by humans. In this way, the antigen of the pathogen will be produced and be present in the genetically modified fruits and vegetables. When the antigen containing fruits are consumed by humans, especially children, as a part of normal diet, they would also get vaccinated simultaneously with ease. This is the logic used for research and development of edible vaccines. Biotechnology for treatment of genetic disorders You have studied about certain human diseases and disorders that are caused due to defective genes or arising from gene mutations. For example, sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, phenylketonuria, cystic fibrosis. In case of such genetic diseases, certain proteins or enzymes produced in the patients are defective or malfunctional because the genes responsible for their production are defective or malfunctional. Such defective genes are termed as mutant genes. Gene therapy is one method of treating patients with such diseases by overcoming or eliminating the cause of the disease. The logic used in treatments like gene therapy is to replace the defective or malfunctional mutant gene in the somatic cells, that is any cell of the body except cells that form gametes, that is sperms and ova, of the patients with a normal copy of the same gene. This way the genetically modified somatic cells of the patient will start producing correctly functioning proteins or enzymes and the disorder will reduce and eventually will cease to exist. Applications of Biotechnology in Environment Management The 18th and 19th centuries witnessed two major industrial revolutions. As a result, there was enormous development of large-scale manufacturing processes and urbanization throughout most of the countries in the world. Thus, in the 20th century, Large number of products and services which were outcome of this industrialization had greatly impacted food, clothing, housing, healthcare, education, transport and various other aspects of human civilization. During this period, many new chemicals were discovered and equally more were synthesized. These chemicals became important components in multiple products that humans use such as detergents, fertilizers, medicines, textiles, utensils, etc. However, towards late 20th century, there came an understanding that indiscriminate and injudicious heavy-handed use of many such chemicals had damaged our environment considerably leading to deterioration in its quality. This in turn has adversely affected the quality of human life. Issues such as pollution, waste disposal, Global warming, depletion of natural resources are major causes of concern. To address these issues and resolve them, there emerged a need to develop environment-friendly or eco-friendly technologies. Biotechnology has been able to provide resolutions to many such issues through development of many eco-friendly processes. 
Some examples which you have studied in previous classes include use of microbes for waste treatment before disposal, composting, biogas production, use of biofertilizers and biopesticides. Here we will discuss some details of bioremediation. Bio means living, remedy is way to solve a problem or difficulty. So simply put, bioremediation means way to solve the problem of polluted and contaminated environment by using living organisms, mainly microbes and plants. Large variety of chemicals have been added to our environment in last two centuries as a result of byproducts or waste products generated from petroleum refineries, metallurgy, chemical pesticides, insecticides and fertilizer applications, plastic or polymer processing and use of vehicular exhaust etc. Many of these chemicals are not easily degraded or decomposed naturally and continue to remain in the environment for years. Such slowly biodegradable or sometimes non-degradable compounds are termed as recalcitrant chemicals. With passage of time, their concentration in the environment has increased to levels detrimental to ecosystems and thus humans. Bioremediation provides methods to ensure comparatively faster degradation of recalcitrant chemical pollutants in eco-friendly manner. Research has helped us discover variety of bacteria that produce enzymes that break down recalcitrant chemicals. Bioremediation process involves growing these microbes on large scale and applying them to areas of soil or water where concentration of such chemical pollutants is higher. These microbes will grow in such regions by utilizing the chemical pollutant during their growth and in turn degraded it faster. Once the amounts of chemical pollutants is reduced considerably, the growth of the microbial population will also reduce. These microbes will eventually die and become organic matter of soil or water bodies. Bacteria belonging to genus Pseudomonas, for example Pseudomonas putida, Pseudomonas tsudzeri, are being used in bioremediation process. Please refer to your textbooks for specific examples.